Hello and welcome to Evening Prayer. I'm going to begin this evening by making a plug for a presentation that we will be hosting next Thursday night via Zoom, but we will also make the presentation available on our YouTube channels and on Facebook. A good friend of mine, Larry Taylor, uh, was invited to be the guest speaker a year ago at St. Andrews because he was reading Parker Palmer's book, Grace, Gravity, and Getting Old. Parker Palmer is uh, a Quaker who has done a lot of great thinking. And these are the words with which Larry begins his presentation. It is an excerpt from a poem by Antonio Machado. Pathfinder, there is no path. You make the pathway by walking. By walking, you make the path. So I was thinking last night about the words I shared with you by Sheena Grund about shifting from a place where we're asking why, why, and moving to a place where we ask, well, now what? One of the things that Parker Palmer affirms in his book, which is a book about uh, growing old, uh, is that it begins by suggesting that each, one ha each person's journey into uh, older age is a unique one. And each person is responsible for discovering what that journey is for themselves and mining the riches of that journey. And it seems to me that one of the reasons why this uh, presentation by Larry is so in keeping with this season is that this season is inviting us to think again about how to make the road by walking. We're all moving into new territory, just like for most of us, getting older is new territory. And I was thinking about the whole journey of getting older as well, and I think about my own journey. I'll be 60 soon. And I'm comparing my journey towards getting older and my mother's journey just 30 years ago. And I think to myself, the last thing my mother would have imagined in the morning was waking up, getting on her elliptical machine, doing some weights, and then ending it with meditation. Yet just 30 years later, my journey towards my 60s looks like that. So what I'm suggesting here is that we're all pretty adaptable people. We're looking at all of the legislation and protocol that's coming down around COVID-19 and going, yeah, how can we live our lives like this? But of course we can. And it's just a matter of getting creative, getting ourselves out of our box, getting ourselves out of our rut, and asking ourselves every day what might feed our souls and what and how we might feed the souls of others. Because if one thing I think is made clear during this pandemic is that we, what affects one affects all. And we've had this deep reminder of something that we've always known. And so as we are called to be responsible for our own life force, I think it's important that we recognize that connecting with our own souls comes with an invitation to consider how we might grow in kindness and compassion, despite some of the challenges of showing that. Yet we are a creative and a resilient bunch. And we're also a pretty privileged bunch. I suspect we are all feeling relatively safe and well-fed from the places that we are living right now. And so I would invite you as you are sitting there and going, hmm, now what? To turn it into a, hmm, now what? What gifts are going to show up among us as we rethink how we are going to thrive, how we are going to thrive with one another? Because one thing is clear that we thrive together or we don't thrive at all. 
And I think that quite possibly that messaging is at the heart of every spiritual tradition. We thrive only as much as our neighbors thrive and therefore to be equally invested in our neighbors is going to be a, represent a win for ourselves. So maybe it's just now that we're beginning to go, okay, this is the gift that we have this day and then again tomorrow. Let's put one foot in front of the other, friends. And let's show ourselves and let's show our communities and let's show our world that we know how to do this. And if we don't know, we're going to learn. So I'm offering a prayer reflection for you this evening entitled, Do You Want to Be Healed? Yes, we want to be healed as the dry whale longs for water, as the exile for her home, as the father wants his children, as the broken house demands its people back. Yes, we want to be healed as those who live in fear of the enemy wish they could breathe safe, as the fence that divided the village prefers to be torn down as children who dream bad dreams need an unbroken night, as those who have long been paralyzed now choose to move. Do you want to be healed? Jesus asked that question of those with whom he lived as well. Because it's a partnership, you know. We're all in this together. And so let's sit in a moment of gratitude for these opportunities to co-create and imagine a world made new. And then let us put this bed, this day to bed, Rest well, good friends, and peace be with you.